The Lodge Activity Board is no longer restricted to just three minutes or under. Join board director Stefan Reynolds and his co-host Ashur as they dive a little deeper into what's happening in Door County. It's time to go beyond the board with FM 106.9, The Lodge. Heidi ho, fun seekers. Are you ready to go beyond the board? I sure hope so, because I am ready to take you there. I am Stefan Reynolds. I am your Beyond the Board podcast host. And this time around, we are going to get to know a very talented country artist whose name I bet you are familiar with. His name is the one, the only, the inimitable Frank Maloney. And he plays all over the place in Door County. And we're going to find out among other things about how he ended up here, about when he worked at Wilson's Restaurant, and also all about his big country unit. Yeah, we'll find out. Is it really as big as it sounds or that he says it is? Well, you'll only find out if you hang in there, strap in, and get ready to go beyond the board with moi. Let's do it. What a thrill it is to have in studio be with me the hardest working man in country music today, Frank Maloney. Hey, Frank. Hey, don't call me a hard working man. <laughs> I hear you, your name all over the place. You're out there hustling. You work hard, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so, but hard working. <laughs> well, it's a, if it's a passion, it's not really like work, is it? That's true, yeah. It is doesn't that how feel you, like work most of the time. Is that how you feel about country music? Yeah. I mean, aside from lifting the equipment into the place and out of the place, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Well, keep going on your current trajectory. Someday you'll have roadies and you won't have to do that. (laughs) That's what we're hoping for someday, yeah. So I kind of dispensed with the pleasantries. You comfortable? You have everything you need? You need a Nescafe, a uh, water? I'm doing all right. Hot towel? Do you need something? I'm good. Okay. (laughs) All right. So yeah, Frank Maloney and his big country unit, that is his current project. We don't have the big country unit in here in Studio B with us, and uh, probably a good thing. I don't think we'd all fit, would we? No, we probably wouldn't all fit, and definitely not not all the voices and opinions would fit into one little podcast with that unit. Tell me about the evolution of this unit, Frank Maloney and his big country unit. How did we come up with that name? Well, it actually started on the south side of Chicago, and we were called Frank Maloney and his Dolt City Ramblers. And then one day we were driving around and just thought it would be really funny if we named the band and his big country unit. And then, uh, I don't know, that, that, that incarnation of the group sort of drifted apart musically, though not as friends. And then I came back up here. And uh, texted Dan Smurz one day, said, let's go start a band. Took me down to Sturgeon Bay, a couple open mics, and that's how it all got going. Yeah, double entendre notwithstanding. I think that's a fun, uh, whimsical name, his big country unit. And they got a big sound, don't they? You guys have a big sound. Well, we do. We got a lot of big personalities in the band, specifically Adam Haste and Tony Wilkin, who like to play off each other on stage and make each other look more and more ridiculous while still being rock and roll and awesome. Let's back up a little to uh, more of your backstory. Where So you're not from Door County? No, I'm from Chicago. How'd you end up here? Well, uh, for the I dropped out of college for the second time. And I'd, I'd been up here as a teenager with my cousin Tony, who now plays uh, keyboards in my band. Uh, and I just decided I didn't want to go home after dropping out of college for the second time. And this was the only place I thought of. Ended up getting a job at Wilson's and... The rest is history. Oh, no way. I worked yeah. at Wilson's way back in the day, as many of us have. What yep. did you do at Wilson's? I cooked for nine years. Wow. I go back to Marge and Bibbs, and then I worked for Chris and Al, and I even worked for Tim and Nancy. I went through three ownerships. It's amazing how many of us can connect ourselves to that place, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I know tons of people. Actually, a lot of my good friends I met working there. Cool. How long have you played music? Uh... I mean, I know I've been writing songs since I was 12. I've been playing drums and guitar since I was 14. So my whole life. Wow, very cool. And you write songs. Yes. Yeah. Well, where does it come from? Ugh, I mean, back in the day, it came from being a uh, uh, an emotional you know, 12-year-old kid. And now it comes from basically going out every night at bars and seeing how people live their lives and writing about that. And how did it dovetail into country music? Uh, funny enough, I mean, yeah, I, I used to be like an, an emo scene kid, uh, but 
in 2008, my brother and I went on a road trip and we went down around the South, started listening to country music radio. And then that just got me interested in, in the old school country, Waylon Jennings, Chris Christopherson, and then Guy Clark, Towns Van Zant. And yeah, so it, it just spiraled into, oh, so this is what you can write songs about anything you want. Three chords and the truth. That's right. And you got the chops for it. You've got the nice deep country voice, right? Yeah, I've been trying to hone in on that for years and years. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess it works. If you say so. <laughs> I think it definitely works for what you do. And what else do you do to support yourself up here in Door County now? I assume you don't work at Wilson's anymore. No, I do not. I work at Roots Inn and Kitchen, which was a very convenient job to get because they're closed at uh, 2.30, so I can play music at night. And then I'm up at the Mink River Basin, uh, currently picking up shifts at the Sister Bay Bowl. Uh Wickman House. I'm just a you know a hand for hire at this point. See, didn't I tell you? You sound like the hardest working man <laughs> in show business to me. Well, I, you know, got to go on vacation here for uh, six weeks, so got to got to earn a little money. And then we didn't even mention that you are currently hosting open mic night at Husby's Food and Spirits in Sister Bay. Tell us about how that happens. That's correct. Uh, open mic night started back up last summer at the garage. And depending on the weather and the time the sun sets uh, uh, in the summer, it either goes from 6 to 9 or 7 to 10. But right now, because it's the winter, we wait till the kitchen closes. We go from 9 to midnight. Um, that should be going on all through the winter. I will, Like I said, I will be out of town for February and March. But anybody can find out about the details, what's going on week to week on Facebook. Just look up Open Mic at Husby's or type in at Husby's Open Mic. Cool. So you are hosting it. You'll play a few songs, won't you? Yes. Uh, myself and my drummer, Dan Smurz, we bring my guitars, his drum set every week for people to use, but we always play, you know, a, a set or two ourselves. It's better if we don't have to play because that means that a lot of people have shown up and, and we want to give other people the time and, you know, to hone their chops. Will you ever accompany, collaborate with Absolutely. people? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. We we've, we've had a lot of people come through where they'll just be like, "Hey, do you know this song?" And if we don't, we might learn it for the next week or two if people want to come back. So when you came in here this morning into the North E from FM one hundred six point nine, the Lodge Studio and Office, I noticed you and one of our account executives, a uh, sales guy extraordinaire, Brady. You guys had a nice hug and a moment. You know each other. Oh, Brady and I have known each other for a long time. I've known him for about as long as I've been up here. I think because he was working at Husby's. And um, for people who don't know me, I tend to spend some time at Husby's. That's a good place to hang, it especially is. considering you're the host of Open Mic Night. Even more reason to hang out there. Yeah, our buddy Brady, he's a sales guy here, an account executive. He also plays Broomball. The 2020 Broomball League is underway at the Sister Bay Sports Complex. They've already had a couple of weeks. Brady plays for the Door County Brewing Company team. It looks like they won their first tilt against Husby's week one, six, two way to go Brady. And the next time it looks like uh, they happen on Wednesday nights, by the way, if you want to go and watch everybody week three, it looks like we got at 6 PM Johnson's park taking on JJ's the 7 PM game is the door County brewing company against E Taylor. And then at eight o'clock, the juggernaut Alexander's, they always have a good team. They tend to be right up there every year in the thick of it. And they will play Husby's that's on Wednesday night. Sister Bay sports complex is where you can go and see those games. It's a lot of fun. And now it's time for five questions. <laughs> Frankie boy. I'd like to ask the same five questions to all of my beyond the board podcast guests. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, hands on. Is that on, question number one? Hands on buzzer. Or uh, just keep them in your pocket like they are. <laughs> you look like you're comfy. Okay, question number one. Do you have a nickname? Frank. How did you get it? It's short for Francis. Oh, beautiful. Most high adventure thing, activity that you have ever done in your life, Frank? Uh, one time I almost climbed a mountain, but I got too scared to go to the top. 
Will you get to the top someday, Frank? <laughs> no, it's frightening. <laughs> what mountain was it? It was uh, uh, outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, <laughs> forget what it was called. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. doesn't matter, <laughs> but that's a great story. If you were on death row, and I'm sure you never will be, but uh-huh. what would your last meal be? Uh, wimpy cheeseburgers from the AC Tet. Beautiful. Biggest accomplishment or proudest moment so far in your young life? Uh, coming into this podcast studio <laughs> wow this is as good as it's gotten frank you gotta get out more <laughs> that's true and then finally your favorite thing to do in door county either hike at newport state park or eat at the waterfront those are great things to do you know what else would be a lot of fun to do would be to go and be in attendance at the big uh hockey tournament yeah, the Pond, the Pond Hockey, hockey tournament. tournament. Yeah, it's yes. coming again. Seventh annual Door County Pond Hockey Tournament. It will return Saturday, February the 8th. That's on Kangaroo Lake when 50 teams will take to the ice of Kangaroo Lake to compete for the coveted Stanley Thermos. Organizers are looking for scorekeepers to help out. If that might be you for some or all of the tournament, then you want to get a hold of Jordan at PeninsulaPacers.com. And uh, you can find out more about the Pond Hockey Tournament coming up on February the 8th by going to DoorCountyPondHockey.com. One of the guys that organizes that and runs that, his name is Brian Fitzgerald, and I'm going to have him in this studio standing right where you are for a future podcast. He's a good guy. He is a righteous dude as well. We all know each other. We help each other out. Isn't it a beautiful thing here in Door County? It is. I used to work for him setting up that Pond Hockey Tournament. Beautiful. See, it all comes together. It's a great time. Go check it out. We should play a, a game, uh, Seven Degrees of Separation from Wilson's. We could do that. <laughs> kind of like You'd never the get Kevin to Seven Degrees. Bacon thing. <laughs> so, what is your plan for the future of Frank Maloney and his big country unit? Well, my plan is to uh, make a bunch of money this coming season, and we're, we're going to start recording an album when I get back from Costa Rica. And. With that money, put it out on vinyl, which is the only medium anybody's going to buy, and uh, see where it goes from there. I mean, make an album, see where it goes. Why do you like to do this? Uh, There's nothing better. I mean, once you get on stage and start playing and and jiving with a group of musicians that that understand the way that that you're trying to make music, yeah, you just lose yourself, and, and I don't know, it's hard to explain, but... I thought you explained it beautifully. So what's knocking around in that head of yours right now, musically, song-wise? Are you writing some stuff that you're particularly excited about? Um, I'm more excited to get the songs that I already have written on wax and then and then go from there and just see where songwriting goes. Right now, I'm mostly learning songs, adding to our set of covers for the coming season, which excuse me, is a way that uh, that inspires me to write different songs is kind of learning other people's songwriting processes and, and covering their songs and then trying to bring that into my own songwriting experience. What song that you've written are you particularly pleased about? What do you get a kick out of? Well, probably Country Music Save My Soul is... I don't know if that's my favorite song, but it's definitely the most fun whenever we hit the opening chords of it on stage. And it's always towards the end of the set and just a a, a barn burner. And I always just like a nice barn burning song that I get to, you know, test the limits of my voice on. Beautiful. And you're going to get out of here for a while. Lucky. You're going to Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yes. Are you going to do some surfing in Costa Rica? I think I'm going to watch my girlfriend learn to surf and I'm going to sit on a beach and read books. Pura Vida. Yeah. P- pure life. That's what they like to say in Costa Rica. I'm all for it. All right. Well, thank you for spending time with me on this Beyond the Board podcast. Frank Maloney, remember, open mic night at Husby's Food and Spirits in Sister Bay. Every Monday night, go and see Frank from 9 until about close and be prepared to perform. Yeah. Or just come and hang out and, and watch other people perform. It tends to be a pretty good show and a good time. Any final thoughts, feelings you'd like to impart upon the Beyond the Board audience, Frank? Um, Come to open mic night. (laughs) Other than that, thank you. Pura Vida.
Pura Vida, yes. Hey there. Thanks for listening. Find the latest episodes of Beyond the Board on the TuneIn app, Apple Podcasts, or right on fm1069thelodge.com. Don't forget to be social. Like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know how you felt about this episode.